challenging asymmetric <laughs> knowledge by learning through responsive play. So again, this is Margaret, and I'm Serena, and uh, we're both on the development team at Core Studio at Thornton Tomasetti. Our group is currently 18 strong, and we work on everything from research and software development to custom building and sculptural projects. We're going to go back a little bit in time to 2010, when Jonathan Schumacher joined Thornton Tomasetti. At the time, he was providing parametric modeling and optimization support for complex projects. A team grew around this and became the Advanced Computational Modeling Group. Eventually, the repetitive challenges of modeling work led to building custom tools that would automate tasks and ensure quality control. So now we're tool builders as well as modelers, and we rebranded to become Core Studio. As our work continued, we realized that our approach to improving workflows would be incomplete without also addressing communication and collaboration. Many new development projects began reaching in this direction that was aimed at facilitating clarity between stakeholders. In a typical design collaboration, a decision maker and a specialist are usually working in silos with limited communication. Usually, the decision maker has a task for a specialist. Since they have asymmetric knowledge of the goals and the skills needed to achieve them, the specialist must try to perform the task using their incomplete understanding of the problem. Then, they need to prepare a report to communicate those results, which usually takes time to condense and summarize in a clear way. <laughs> this exchange of information after that time-consuming process helps to bridge a little of this asymmetry, but for any number of reasons, such as changing project circumstances or miscommunication, the result is almost never right the first time, and the process needs to start again. Our goal is to change the dynamic between these two and decrease the overall time required to act on new information in a collaborative and responsive way. We imagine that this could be looping and iterative, so that each design builds on the last one, include nearly real-time feedback, so that the loop happens much faster, and encourage informed buy-in, so that both parties are aware of the reasons for the design changes. Hopefully, this can contribute to a better solution, faster, that both parties can invest in together. We suspect that this will lead to a more engaging design process. So throughout our history of tool building and application development, every endeavor has yielded insights that have allowed us to steer our next round of experimentation in an informed way. And today we're going to dive into two experiments from this past year. So first we're going to talk about Asterisk, which is a lightweight structural feedback application that returns fast and usable metrics. And secondly, we're going to talk about Thread, which is a platform for data exploration that is tailored to iterative processes. And so with that, Margaret's going to tell you more about Asterisk. So Asterisk is a designer's app for structural optioneering, focusing on the conceptual phase of design. Generally, the design process includes a lot of transfers of information between owners, architects, engineers, and contractors. At each decision point, one of these parties usually needs to review or analyze and send a new directive to another. Given all of these bounces of information, there's immense potential for early information to influence the design process. This actually happened in-house for us. We had a project here, 10 Hudson Yards, um, where early decisions really affected the project substantially. Initially, the design was going to be done in steel. And throughout the concept and schematic phases, the design changes bounced back and forth between the designers and the owner. But then at 100% DDs, the option was priced, and it turned out to be much more expensive than a concrete option. For a tower this large, it was worth it to switch from steel to concrete. So the design started all over again, this time with concrete filigree slabs. And the pricing exercise was repeated to confirm the design and allow the process to continue. We envision Asterisk as a tool that can help test multiple options quickly. So using Asterisk, more options can be evaluated and buy-in can happen earlier so that the entire design time is cut down and the process is more streamlined. Wouldn't you love to know the structural metrics and potential impacts of early design as informed by thousands of engineers in a matter of seconds? We spent the past year or so developing Asterisk, 
currently in alpha, to tackle this. Asterisk takes in a massing, optionally a core, through the Rhino interface. And along with base size, program, and facade, it returns a structural design complete with early metrics. It can handle both steel and concrete. So if you see your steel design has certain metrics and you're curious what would happen in concrete, you can select the concrete option and change a few parameters and try it again. Once it returns, you can see that given the new design inputs, you actually have a lower cost and a higher weight in this option. You can dive into your building and look at the properties of individual elements. From there, you can visualize a property across the entire structure. Maybe you're interested in something like the tributary areas for the columns, or you're interested in the section guts for ceiling heights, or you want to know how the floor area changes from the base to the roof of your building. Zooming out, once you have multiple options, you'll need a way to filter these down. Asterisk lets you filter both the input parameters and the output metrics. So if you're trying to target a certain floor to floor height or a certain cost per square foot, you can do that. And then you can select specific iterations to generate a comparison that highlights the design trade-offs. Our hope is that Asterisk can help uncover design impacts from the structural point of view. So how does it do that? A 3D client, which wraps a web client, sends information about the geometry and the initial parameters to our server. We then pre-process th this information and send requests out to both a geometry service and a prediction service, here called CoreLearn. And from there, the information returns back to our servers, which stitch it together and stream it out as a new iteration. On the geometry side, the service works by taking the initial mass massing and generating a bounding box for it. From there, we voxelize the box. And we project those voxels onto floors. And then once we have the floors, we intersect those with the massing so that the wireframe is generated with bays that are the size of the voxels. And the voxels are the base size that you initially input. Since we built the wireframing engine on these basic blocks, it's very flexible, so that you can wireframe almost anything. On the machine learning side, we've been pretty careful about how we want to implement the algorithms. Since we have specific answers that we're looking for, and we know what the correct responses are supposed to be, we can tailor the algorithms to automate the processes that we have high confidence in, such as beam or column design. We're using machine learning specifically for speed. Because if you were to calculate the designs for these buildings, it would take a team of engineers three weeks, whereas Asterisk can return something similar to you in seconds. In Asterisk, we break the prediction down into individual components so that we can adjust the models for different material predictions. In this case, um, for steel, we can predict girder, beam, column, and brace sizes. And for concrete, we can predict the shear wall, column, and floor thicknesses. Um, and then focus the input parameters to those specific models. Then we can fine tune each of those models' accuracies so that we know why the results are returning the way that they are and we can set expectations properly. We can test the results uh, since we can calculate the values and then allow ourselves the option to switch to calculations if we needed to and validate the design predictions that we have for each type of element, whether for steel or for concrete. These models then return the individual properties that you see here, the details in the design. In this case, the column size and point load are determined by our models. And then these properties are aggregated to calculate the weight, the cost, and the other metrics in the building. Similar to the geometry building blocks, these are the building blocks of structural design that create a structure similar to what a specialist, in our case, a structural engineer, would produce. In fact, these are some of the asterisk models from confidential tower competition that our in-house engineers worked on a few weeks ago. They're just some of the dozens of options that were tested in order to arrive at an early design. And our teams were able to try out a lot of designs in a single day, as opposed to a fraction of that number in a week. Asterisk is here to help you understand Thornton Salmasetti's approach to structural engineering. 
It's an interface between a decision maker and a specialist that reveals some of the structural design feedback that can impact early design. With this understanding, we hope that decision makers can factor in more of the structural consequences to the design decisions. This application in particular focuses on a specific problem at a specific point in time in the design process where the stakeholders are pretty well defined. But we're also interested in the types of problems with varied parameters that are harder to parse and even harder to explain. We're working on a generalized approach to this with Thread, which I'll hand off to Serena to show. Okay, so uh, switching gears, we're gonna talk about Thread now. Uh, Thread is a data exploration platform that we've built that is tailored to iterative decision-making processes. Colloquially, we've been calling it our new version of Design Explorer, but I think we need to back up and be like, what's Design Explorer first? So briefly, Design Explorer was an open source project that was released by Core Studio in 2015. It featured this dashboard interface where inputs and outputs from a parametric study are drawn on these vertical axes on parallel coordinates plots. By filtering ranges along each input or output variable, users can quickly evaluate the trade-offs and performance results from a brute force parametric study. It was originally largely the efforts of Mustafa, who is now at Ladybug Tools, and then later enhanced and is maintained by Mingbo, who is in our sustainability practice. But Design Explorer was also built off of the work of Pollination, which is a hackathon project from 2014, which a lot of the people in this room worked on. And since its release, the concept of multidimensional exploration for design problems sparked an enormous enthusiasm for this kind of interactive learning through play. And of course, we at Core Studio want to keep building on that promise, so what do we have in mind? Design Explorer was so great at finding the few or the one out of many options, but it was also tailored toward the specialist. The dashboard was intimidating to clients and it was difficult to explain. And in Thread, we have some new goals. First, we would like to be inclusive of more roles in the design process. Secondly, we would like to increase the flexibility of the platform to assist with more kinds of problems. And lastly, we would like to communicate the goal and intent of a project in addition to just its data. With that in mind, we developed some new features. We added logic for you to set the desirableness of every metric. You can create custom dashboards for your projects that are tailored to your needs and switch between those save layouts. And you can share dashboard data and filter combinations with clients so that they can have a controlled experience of play and engagement in the decision-making process. And with that concept in mind, let's move on to some case studies. So starting with the San Francisco Conservatory of Music by Mark Cavaniero Associates. This was a study for the auditorium at the top of this building, which had really great views, but they also wanted to manage glare. And since it's a performance space and HVAC systems make a lot of noise, the goal was to use radiant systems instead, which can't handle as high of a load. So they were also really concerned with radiation on the Western glazing. The project collaboration was actually already done in Design Explorer, but we're just gonna try it out in Thread for fun. So um, here we go. Each Thread study begins with uploading your data to a design space. In this case, this is a CSV. And the format of your number, such as, or the format of your data, such as number, date, or string, will be automatically parsed by the uploader. And then you can also add supporting files, such as images or 3D model information that's referenced in your data table. Once that's up, you can drag and drop to create a custom layout that best fits your questions using our widget library. There's lots of options to choose from and we're adding more all the time. So after you create the layout, now you can play with filters to narrow your choices down. In Thread, we've added many new types of widget filters in addition to the parallel plots, such as the checkboxes that you can see here. And once you've played around you can, and settled on some benchmarks, maybe you can go to your fields and set the target goals for your project based on the high performers in your study. And so once you've done that, you can go back and see that the widget displays are responding to the goals that you have just set. And once you have this, you can also now use our conditions filter widget where you can quickly filter the entire design space by only what you consider to be passing performance. Okay, so now that we've like narrowed it down a little bit, maybe we want to share this with a client or another collaborator, but in a more legible way. So now we return to the dashboard editor and create a simpler layout for our client. To this layout, we can also add what we are calling static content, such as text, links, or hosted images that will supplement the data visualization and the filtering widgets and guide viewers narratively the way that a report would, but leaving their experience still open to play. Messing around with that a little bit. And then now we can share this dashboard, its data, and the predefined filters with our collaborator directly. 
So now when they open the project, they only see these pre-filtered views and then they're taken straight into the, what you have set up for them. Okay, so second study, quickly, Passive House. This is a confidential affordable housing project in San Jose, California that wanted to meet Passive House standards. So Passive House has these really strict requirements and those that are relevant to the study we captured in the data field here in Thread. Um, we ran a massive number of roof floor studies, 120,000 results for different combinations of roof, wall, window, R and U values, heat recovery options, fan power, and glass solar heat gain coefficient. And you can watch them all draw here. In the end, only 100 of those runs met all the requirements of Passive House for the site location. And so from there, the project team is quickly able to optimize for the considerations that they needed. And our last case study here is going to be a data exploration that does not represent configurations in a parametric study at all. This here is 30 Hudson Yards designed by KBF, and Thorntom said he provided many services on this project, but in this example, we're just gonna look at data from a single Tecla model that was exported via Construe. And so in this case, each row, instead of representing you know, a parametric, beat, uh, parametric design option, is going to represent one element in the structural model, such as a beam or a column. So here we see thread side by side with another Core Studio application called Mirar. We first connect our two sessions together, and now we can see that our model responds to our thread exploration. In this example, we're highlighting our 3D model by assigned structural material. And next, we can move to the bar chart to look at the data by level, while still coloring by material per the thread interface. Here we can see that the upper levels are mostly steel, while the lower levels use more materials. You can also color and sort by any attribute that was uploaded. In this case, we're trying out level, or ID, or profile, or others. And lastly, Mira also responds to filter as well as highlight events by highlighting the things that have been filtered out. And so here we're filtering out all the standard profiles because we would only like to look at the Thornton Tomasetti custom beams. We can see a grid of custom beams at a level above the observation deck, as well as a few custom members in the deck itself. And so once we filter down our data, we can continue exploring over the subset in the same way. And so there's so many ways we can go with this. We've gotten kind of meta here where we're building tools so stakeholders can communicate with each other. And then Thread is using these customizable modules to allow you thousands of dashboard combinations and now we're experimenting with bringing our apps together to communicate so that they can be daisy chained together for the functionality that you would need. And we're really excited to think about what else can be done with these concepts. Beyond helping you design great projects, we want these tools to free up your time, give you some room for exploration, growth, and more interesting work. But how can we do that? Well, we need your help. Let us know how you work, how you collaborate, how you communicate, Hopefully, some of this is inspiring you to work with us so that we can improve the tools that will help you work the way that you want. If so, we encourage you to follow up and try out the two applications. We're not quite sure where we're going with them yet, but we think that there's some promise here. So for now, both sites are open for alpha testing, and if you're interested, please get in touch with us. And thank you, everyone, and really, thank you, Sergey. <laughs>